Shunryu Suzuki, Zen Mind, Beginner's Mind, Informal Talks on Zen Meditation and Practice. Embark on a journey of self-exploration and spiritual growth with this summary of Zen Mind, Beginner's Mind, Informal Talks on Zen Meditation and Practice by Shunryu Suzuki. Discover the power of posture, how non-duality is at the heart of the Zen worldview, and the profound lessons in Zen breathing. Embrace the concepts of patient perseverance, experiential learning from failure, and the importance of maintaining a calm mind amidst the chaos of modern life. Delve into the art of pure activity and strive to be in the present moment, while understanding the true nature of generosity and the beauty of selflessness that comes with practicing Zen. This summary breaks down complex Zen ideas in a simple, engaging, and instructive manner. Zen Posture for Spiritual Growth The lotus posture in Zen practice is more than just a physical position, it holds symbolic meaning and promotes spiritual growth. Zen Buddhism has gained popularity for its ability to provide a sense of spiritual peace and tranquility, and one of the ways it achieves this is through a specific posture. The lotus posture requires you to sit cross-legged, preferably with your right foot on your left thigh and your left foot on your right thigh, your spine straight, your chin gently pressed down and your center of the body aimed directly towards the floor. This position allows the mind to automatically tune into the spiritual realm, making it the entirety of the practice itself. The lotus position in Zen practice symbolizes non-duality, the notion that all things and beings on earth have the same essence. Life and death are no longer perceived as opposite entities but rather as a unified, harmonious idea. While the body and mind dissolve, they remain eternal. This posture symbolizes a non-dualistic view of the world, where seeming contradictions are unified. By adopting this posture and incorporating the notion of non-duality into practice, one can achieve spiritual growth and find comfort in the cyclical nature of life. Cultivate Awareness with Zen Breathing Zen breathing cultivates an awareness of our true nature by focusing our attention on the breath and dissolving the feeling of time and space. This practice helps us let go of duality and realize the unity of the world, connected by the flow of breath. Zen breathing is a simple practice that involves observing the breath as it enters and leaves the body. By doing so, we begin to notice the world as a unified whole, free of boundaries. The air flowing through the throat connects the inner world of the body to the outer world, leading us to let go of the idea of I and other. This practice takes us even further by dissolving the feeling of time and space. When we let go of ego and the world disappears, time and space cease to exist, and minutes slip away without differentiation. We are left with only the in-breath and the out-breath. In summary, through Zen breathing, we can cultivate awareness of our true nature and let go of duality. This practice helps us to realize the unity of the world and dissolve the illusion of time and space. The Futility of Control In a society obsessed with control and micromanagement, the idea of letting go seems counterintuitive. However, the author argues that relaxation and observance of our surroundings without interference can lead to breakthrough ideas. Life is inherently disorderly, and attempts to control it are futile. Even trying to control others often backfires. Instead, people behave more reasonably when allowed to be free. In meditation, trying to control our thoughts is counterproductive. The proper method is to observe without judgment and return focus to breathing. In essence, the best way to live and meditate is to relinquish control and allow the natural flow of things. Overcoming Adversity in Meditation Meditation can be challenging, but encountering adversity can help you grow. Just as weeds enrich the soil when buried near flowers, overcoming struggles in meditation can feed your practice and lead to progress. While waves of distraction and discouragement are normal, it's essential to make the correct effort to calm the mind by focusing on the breath. With practice, your effort will become more precise and less strained. Zen's approach to effort and success differs from the conventional Western conceptions of these words and emphasizes the value of using adversity to nourish your practice. So, when you encounter difficulty in meditation, know that it's an opportunity for growth. 
The Zen Way of Success Success isn't the main goal of Zen teachings. Zen believes in patient perseverance, where the worst students often become the best due to their disciplined minds. Western society values effortless success, but Zen teaches that failure can lead to success. This can be observed in calligraphers with natural talent who tend to give up when they reach their plateau. In contrast, calligraphers who struggle initially can deal with and overcome challenges more effectively. Zen teaches that the intention of practice is more important than its level of difficulty. The Samyaktagama Sutra speaks of good horses that obey their riders without question, in contrast to bad horses that resist orders. Zen provides a different perspective on success, which allows people to cultivate skills and minds through intensive practice. The Calm Path of Zen Zen practice aims to bring focus and happiness to the mind through mundane activities and daily meditation. Unlike the excitement-driven modern lifestyle, Zen encourages maintaining a calm mind while engaging in daily routines. This requires faithfulness to practicing a daily hour of meditation and letting go of pride and disappointment in achieving Zen. Zen aims to eliminate external goals, allowing individuals to engage purely in the activity at hand. Zen for a Purer Life The goal of Zen is to purely engage in an activity without attaching thoughts to it. Zen acknowledges that true activity is a gesture of giving, and when we engage in an activity without preoccupations, all our activity becomes an act of generosity. Do you often feel anxious and distracted, even during activities that should bring you peace, like going for a walk? Zen may be the solution you need to overcome these obstacles. The ultimate goal of Zen is to detach from all thoughts, emotions, and judgments related to any given activity. By becoming entirely absorbed in the moment, you're no longer preoccupied with what will happen afterward or how others will perceive your actions. This frees you to engage in activity for the sake of completeness, or simply put, to give. Zen emphasizes that the true value of any creation is not in how it's received by others, but in the pure act of creation. One key point to remember is that Zen isn't a means to an end. You can't start practicing Zen in the hopes of becoming more generous or calmer. Instead, the practice of Zen is a way of being that requires you to let go of all attachments to the outcome of your actions. Zen reminds us that since we're not separate from the divine, everything we do is an act of generosity that benefits everyone. The mystery of Zen lies in its enigmatic nature, which resists a binary statement of right or wrong. By living a life that embodies constant contemplation and detachment from concerns, you're guaranteed to experience the benefits of Zen, such as generosity and clarity of mind. In conclusion, Zen Mind, Beginner's Mind, by Shunryu Suzuki offers a refreshing perspective on the practice of Zen meditation and how it can enhance one's life. Through mindfulness and embracing non-duality, practitioners can cultivate inner peace and interconnectedness with the world. The book emphasizes the importance of perseverance, learning from adversity, and focusing on the present moment as keys to achieving spiritual growth. By practicing Zen, you can nurture a sense of generosity, serenity, and appreciation for life's simple moments. Also, reap the rewards of letting go of attachments and expectations all while staying grounded in the reality of everyday life. This summary ensures that readers grasp the significant points and their relevance to the holistic message of the book.